Hey guys, uh, have you ever been asked something like, what's the most important thing that you guys have missed in that examination? Or did you think that intubation went well? If so, you've probably been on the receiving end of a GWIT or guess what I'm thinking question. And you will be familiar with GWITs, particularly if you're medical. And when I was a med student, we called them consultant questions. It was the type of question where you knew the consultant had a specific answer in their head and you had to just keep guessing until you could extract the right one. And there was often a sense that, you know, even if you had an alternative answer that was viable, you kind of had to keep going anyway because the goal wasn't to answer the question. The goal was to guess the specific words that were in the consultant's mind. You usually get guided there to the right answer with kind of cryptic hints, facial expression, and positive feedback once you're on the right track. Or you'd never get there and you'd feel like crap. And at the end of that, kind of with some relief, hopefully some learning will have occurred and you walk away with some pearls of wisdom. But you might also walk away feeling frustrated, like a failure, or just kind of irritated by the experience and dreading the next teaching opportunity. So this type of teaching is really rife within healthcare and it probably originates from how much we uh, put Socrates and Socrates' teaching methods up on a pedestal in healthcare. Socrates, after all, was famous for teaching his students by asking them questions. And over time, we seem to have enshrined an obsession with this idea that interactivity and meaningful teaching can only happen if we're asking learners questions. But in their landmark paper entitled, There's No Such Thing as Non-Judgmental Debriefing, Jenny Rudolph and her colleagues point out that GWITs are kind of shitty. Because yeah. sure, some teaching occurs, but GWITs shift the emphasis of the learning conversation away from thinking about the problem and instead on the learner just mind reading the expert. And in doing so, it kind of perpetuates hierarchies, it can be deeply uncomfortable, and worst of all, it's just not actually very efficient, and it kind of leads to superficial learning conversations and gotcha moments. And this can happen in debriefing all the time as well, often when facilitators are uncomfortable sharing their opinion, even though they have one. And that can come out in debriefing questions like, is there anything you'd like to talk about with that unplanned extubation? <laughs> Uh, while the team simultaneously senses that there's kind of something that you actually really want to talk about, but they just don't know what it is. The solution in most cases is to just be more transparent around our thoughts. And in doing so, we can shift the conversation away from trying to mind read each other, instead back to exploring a problem more deeply. So for example, if we think a procedure was suboptimal in the sim, rather than trying to get the participants to spontaneously admit that, you can just say, Hey, I think there are opportunities for us to improve that procedure next time, starting with how the intubation tray was set up. Is it okay if we just explore that together and see if there's things we can think of? There's also nothing wrong with just asking people questions so that they can practice recall. I.e., if you've got a bunch of exam candidates and they just need to practice what are the seven differentials of tachycardia in a patient of this age, that's fine. But the key there is to make it clear that you're practicing recalling knowledge rather than them trying to mind read you specifically. So in your next debriefs, watch for those guess what I'm thinking questions and consider whether just telling people what you're thinking might be a better way to get to a deeper conversation.